really sad. Joining me now is Congressman Ted Lieu, Democrat from California, Natasha Bertrand, staff writer for The Atlantic, Trita Parsi, president of the National Iranian American Council, and E.J. Dion, columnist at The Washington Post. And Congressman, I'll start with you. Um, this was an extraordinary step for the FBI to release a redacted version of that FISA warrant. Uh, going through that warrant, what does it tell you about the government's effort to surveil Carter Page? Uh, thank you, Jerry, for your question. It shows that there was overwhelming evidence to have probable cause to do surveillance on Carter Page. The application itself was over 400 pages. There were multiple sources in that application. It showed that Carter Page had a history of interactions with Russian intelligence officers, that Russia interfered in America's elections, and that Carter Page may have been conspiring with the Russians. It would have been a dereliction of duty for our FBI not to have sought a surveillance warrant on Carter Page. So then, uh, Congressman, what are we to now make of Devin who has close ties to the Trump campaign, um, who has been a defender, uh, really a vehement defender of Donald Trump, almost no matter what we've heard come out of the Mueller investigation, um, who was supposed to be recused from the investigation because he was on the transition, but who's, who led a partisan effort on the House Intelligence Committee as a leader, member of the Gang of Eight to put out a narrative that there was nothing to there was, not, there was no basis for the FISA warrant. What do we make now of that, that majority report that came out of House Intelligence? Uh, Devin Nunes has admitted publicly he did not read the source documents for his infamous Nunes memo. So he basically wrote this entire memo to mislead the American public without ever having read this FISA application. And now we know that this FISA application contradicts the Republican narrative. And in addition, what we have here is a FBI and Department of Justice working in a nonpartisan professional manner trying to deal with Russian interference in our elections. And the Mueller investigation needs to continue without any more political interference. Natasha Bertrand, I realize it's early on a Sunday morning, but I'm wondering if you're here starting to hear any reaction from Republicans who, again, the partisan members, the, the Republican majority on the House Intelligence Committee, uh, all signed on to a memo that that is the opposite of what we're reading in, in this actual warrant application. It shows Christopher Steele was not the only source, that there was a genuine belief among uh, the, those who, the government uh, age officials who achieved this warrant or who went for this warrant, that Carter Page really was acting a, a, as an agent of Russia. How are Republicans responding to that? Well, they're not responding yet, of course, and I think that, it, honestly, it is Republican uh, Representative Trey Gowdy who is going to have a lot to answer for this because, of course, he was the one who actually read the FISA warrant itself. Nunes was briefed on it. He never actually saw the underlying source materials, as the congressman just said. But Trey Gowdy did, and Trey Gowdy, of course, signed on to this memo, and he endorsed it, and he say that there was reason to believe that the FBI had not been forthcoming with the FISA court about the fact that Chris Steele had potential biases, that he was hired by partisan operatives on the Democratic uh, National Committee in order to do opposition research on Trump. Now we know that, of course, the, the FBI devoted nearly a page to disclosing Steele's uh, potential biases of that, of that kind. So it's going to be Gowdy who, you know, will have to answer for this. We have not heard them come out and say so far, you know, how they how they are going to to spin this because of course anyone who reads the FISA warrant can see in plain black and white that the Nunes memo was nothing but was everything. I mean, it was very misleading. It was just a complete partisan show in order to bolster this narrative that the FBI improperly surveilled the Trump campaign, which of course also makes no sense because the surveillance of Carter Page did not actually begin until after he left the campaign, until about a month after he'd already left the campaign. So the whole thing just really is nonsensical. Now, and EJ Dion, here is, first of all, here is the, the here is the declassified FISA warrant for those who are watching. You can see there are lots of redactions on it. Uh, on the first page of it, right at the top, EJ, it's dated, this application is dated 10 blacked out 2016, meaning that this was a warrant application that took place before the United States election, before the election in 2016. Um, so the FBI may have been late to the game. We're going to talk with the former CIA director. They were late to the game in uh, believing that this effort by Russia was on behalf of Donald Trump, but they certainly were investigating members of the Trump campaign. What do you make of this disclosure and how it may alter the narrative Republicans are trying to put out uh, about the investigation of Russia's uh, interference in our election? Well, I think it's really striking that uh, that uh, Robert Mueller and the FBI and Justice have been under a relentless attack from President Trump and the Republican.
They are clearly willing to make things up in order to further their narrative. And for a long time, they were relatively quiet. They didn't think it was their job to jump into the public debate as a sparring partner. And what they did is they waited and waited, and then suddenly they came out with really powerful information that kind of blows all the other arguments out of the water. First were those indictments, which came right before Trump's meeting with Putin. And the fact that those indictments came out right before the meeting uh, put everything Trump said in a remarkable light. He was forced to pick between Putin and our intelligence services, and he essentially picked Putin and then had to clean it up in the back. And now, uh, they are putting out this warrant, which clearly shows that there was very good reason to put uh, Carter Page under surveillance, that A, they had been truthful about um, what they knew about Steele, but also that it was based on other sources. So I think they are just slowly but methodically building up a case that is going to be harder and harder for Trump to deny, not only in court or in the Congress.